Welcome back to GCSA TV Live from the, the Golf Industry Show uh, here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, here with my good friend Ken Ross from, from Frost Incorporated. Uh, I want to thank Lebanon Turf for sponsoring this particular segment. Um, and uh, we have AirRag Precision Application Technologies uh, that is also sponsoring this. So my name's Sam Bauer. Uh, I'm Extension Educator at the University of Minnesota. Uh, and, and Ken is with Frost Technologies. So welcome, Ken. Good to see you today. Good to be here. Uh, remind us, uh, the, the particular segment we're going to discuss here is how GPS uh, sprayer systems strengthen our BMP initiatives. Now, uh, remind us of what BMPs are and why they're important for turf grass management. Well, sure. Uh, BMPs are best management practices, and they're kind of a playbook for how we do things on a golf course, and they're, they're really a, a, a good tool for keeping things organized on, on how we do things the best way possible. But they're also very important for organizations like the GCSAA, a lot of state and regional chapters of the GCSAA are often under some criticism from legislative or regulatory groups or even special interest groups on how you know, we do things on our turf. And an example might be, you know, there's a slide up here of a golf course that has residences to the north, agriculture to the south, and a big lake to the one side of bordering this property. And you can imagine that the Lake Association people are pretty concerned about what's going on on the land around that lake. And the, an easy target is the golf course. It's harder for them to reach the homeowners that are over applying Newton nitrogen or something on their yards. Yep. And it's tougher to fight agriculture, but golf courses are an easy target. So we need to come up with ways, BMPs are ways that we can show transparency on what we do and make sure that everyone understands what we're doing in the right way. Now, related to these best management practices, your specific work is in GPS spray technology. So where does that come into play? Well, um, sprayers and spreaders are second only to irrigation as far as the devices that we use to put inputs into our turf grass. Obviously, irrigation systems take care of the uh, uh, the water uh, management, but we've got a lot of things like fertilization, um, PGRs, uh, soil amendments, all these things that we're doing with sprayers and spreaders. And GPS guidance is critical for being more accurate in our application. So what I mean by that is GPS sprayers that utilize individual nozzle control can be right down to the nozzle specific about what we're applying. And if we're going to be good stewards, obviously that is uh, an important part of it. Um, one of the things, though, that we have to think about, too, is that GPS sprayers are giving guidance to the operators. So the operators are able to see where they've applied and where they have yet to apply. And that creates an opportunity for, um, again, uh, more accuracy in application. One of the last things, I guess, that GPS spray technologies do that I think is really important is that they give a lot of confidence to the operators and to the managers, the superintendents. Because after a job is executed or sprayed or spread, with these GPS spray technologies, we can create uh, files that can be easily opened in uh, open platform uh, software programs like Google Earth and you can actually see where everything was applied, and anyone can see it. And it also will show how many gallons of liquid or pounds of product were applied and give a, real, a permanent record of that. So it creates an opportunity of transparency. So in a best management practice situation, either for a golf course or for a chapter of the GCSAA, if any regulatory agency comes and wants to see what, what we've done, we can very transparently share that information about any of those applications through Google Earth and programs like that. Okay, you bet. Well, I've had the opportunity to see some of this technology firsthand and, and really appreciate your support with that. We've mm -hmm. worked hand in hand in a lot of cases and it's really neat stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, it sounds like a lot of changes though with how some of this equipment works. 
Uh, how does this uh, fit into golf courses that might currently have their established spray program? Is there a lot of changes to that program? Well, I tell you what, the key word that you just mentioned was established spray programs. And an established spray program is usually established because it works for the superintendent, for the property, with the tools that they have, right? With the tools that they have, they establish this program and it works for them. You bet. Well, when you change the tools, you end up changing the program, Okay. right? So if we in, in, in include GPS spray technologies into a spray program, it is going to change it. it. It just definitely is. But the results are more efficiency, so less chemistry sprayed because we're minimizing overlaps, and we are also giving more confidence to everyone in the spray program because the operators are more confident in what they're doing and the superintendent's more confident, confident that what they wanted to get done is getting done. So those things definitely change a spray program. Sure. One of the key things though is the next step in changing spray programs and that's bringing up this concept and idea of instead of just doing a spray application of, for instance, 1.5 gallons per thousand across a whole fairway, we can actually collect some data and put together a plan where we can more micromanage that fairway application and maybe only do one gallon per thousand in this area, maybe 1.5 in here, but maybe down to 1.25 in another. Using tools like uh, vegetative health index, things like that, um, we can collect data, make decisions, and change our spray program by thinking more as a micromanaging that spray program instead of just broad brush uh, doing applications. So this sounds like you know, precision agriculture at its finest and, you, and you're really down to you know, such a small scale compared to agriculture with the individual nozzle control. But now what you brought up j just recently is this variable rate technology. Mm -hmm. So um, what initial data do I need to have to collect to be able to get on a variable rate application technology program? Sure. You know, I, I try to simplify it a little bit um, and I categorize it as what I call ground level data and that's data that you can collect as a superintendent on the ground. This All is right? moisture meter stuff. Moisture meters, soil compaction, um, soil nutrient information, um, any, any of that data that you can collect about your turf and about your property is going to be powerful. Okay. Then there's high level data, drone, satellite, aerial imagery. And what that is is that vegetative index where we can spectrally analyze an image of our turf and determine what part of that turf needs more inputs versus another part of it. We've got some good industry partners in this arena. Um, Winfield United has a great tool called Geotech. Okay. And using tools like they have, you also get the agronomic support from all of their experience with the, the products that are being used as well. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, it sounds like uh, you know certainly a lot of potential for product savings, uh, a lot of potential for uh, reduced environmental impact with specifically some of the pesticides that we're using, so really neat stuff there. Now, uh, I come from a little bit you know, of a superintendent background, uh, spent a lot of time on golf courses. Uh, these golf course superintendents have a lot on their plate. Um, how do you anticipate them to add something like this to their plate? Yeah, uh, the best way I can answer that is, you know, even a, a superintendent that's been on a property for 10 years probably has had a smartphone for about two or three years. Sure, okay. You know, so a smartphone is an, a parallel a analogy, I think, where, you know, these guys recognize that the benefits of the information and the things that you can do with that smartphone far outweigh what burden that might be to include it into their lifestyle. It's, it's just, it, that's what technology does in our lives. But I think about it one other way too. You know, you could be on a golf course for 10 years and have a lot of knowledge about your soils, your grasses, everything kind of cataloged and, and built up in your head. But look at the turnover that we've seen in superintendents across the nation at golf courses. And a lot of superintendents or assistants are moving up into superintendent properties and, and they're, they're new eyes on this property. 
Well, if they don't have that legacy of information, how are they going to learn what to do in their best management practices? How are they going to generate a playbook for that property sure. if they don't have this data and don't use some of these tools? It would be very difficult to do that. So it's, again, it's a very much a helpful tool for tenured superintendents, but then also new superintendents. Okay, so it might be a very short learning curve for some of the technology, and it sounds like um, uh, certainly a lot of benefits there with the technology, and once you get it going, uh, it probably helps to streamline an operation very well, um, I would assume, also. Yeah, they do. So, uh, are, what about uh, the price with some of these GPS spray systems? You know, there are a lot of uh, costs associated with golf course maintenance nowadays. How can a golf course superintendent fit that into their budget, and, and is there a return on the investment uh, in this case? Yeah. Um, yes, uh, there is a cost with investing in technology. Uh, just like the example of a smartphone, um, you know, they cost seven, eight hundred bucks a piece or whatever. Well, a GPS system is going to cost an initial cost to get up and running. There's no doubt about that. Sure. But what we hear in the industry, and I've been fortunate to work with a system that is priced right and valued right, and the return on investment is very rapid. Most guys say within two years they have completely, you know, uh, made up in just the hard numbers what it's done. It's harder to quantify all of the other uh, peripheral benefits. For instance, increased productivity, you know, getting your sprayer on and off the course faster, you know, how much is that worth to you? It's worth different amounts to different superintendents, but there are a lot of in, you know, intrinsic benefits that um, are also played into that return on investment. Sure, yeah, I bet you can get golfers out playing much quicker too if you're streamlining that, that speed of spraying yeah. in the morning, for example. Yeah, and just simply getting the sprayer on and off the course faster. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, seem to be a lot of companies out there now offering these GPS guided systems. Is it, uh, are they all created equal? Um, what, what uh, uh, are they all the same? No, they're not. Uh, definitely not. Um, we have a system that is retrofittable, so it can be put on any sprayer, and that's been a benefit for us. But there's also the opportunity of getting systems from OEMs directly. So those are kind of two uh, pathways where people can get uh, this type of technology. The, um, you know, the, the other differences, I guess there's differences on how uh, individual nozzle control is controlled. And you know, I'm not going to castigate one system over the other. Uh, I'm here to promote the technology. But I will say that they are not all the same. And I really encourage everyone to do their research. Okay. And, um, here at GIS is an awesome opportunity to be able to do that. Absolutely, So you bet, okay. Um, we initially started this conversation with identifying how some of these technologies can impact the best management practices that you know, a lot of our government agencies are certainly concerned about nowadays. So uh, can, they really, can these tools really have an impact on some of these regulatory pressures uh, in identifying these BMPs? I want to say yes, and I, I guess the reason why I think it is true is that it has been successful. I know of specific cases where it's been successful in agriculture, where um, there's been situations that, um, you know, a certain product is, is applied either as an input for agriculture or, you know, just parallel with turf, and an organization or a group or a farmer or a superintendent has had to defend their position. Basically, they've had to say, well, no, we're, we're not over applying, we're only applying what needs to be done here. And by using GPS technologies and being very transparent about what we're doing as either a property best management practice, you know, this playbook that I talk about, or at an association level through the GCSAA template or a chapter in Minnesota or a chapter wherever it is, that transparency usually leads to mutual cooperation. Sure. And it gets people on the same page so that they aren't throwing darts at each other. Right, you, you bet. Know, they're, they're cooperating. Okay, so how can people learn more about GPS spray technologies? Well, here at GIS, you have a great opportunity. Um, our company has a booth in 
15101. Uh, and we'd be happy to answer any questions. And uh, you know, again, do your research and we'd love to help you out. Okay, up next is the Collegiate Turf Bowl uh, with the, the winning team from last year, Penn State. Thanks again to AirRag.